Hey guys, it's Godbars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 118th episode of my series, where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So while JPEG Mafia isn't exactly new to this page, I haven't technically done a review for him yet, I just mentioned him a couple times in my Top 50 Hip-Hop Albums of 2023 video. Mainly because he grabbed the number two spot with his mind-bending collaboration with Danny Brown scaring the hoes. He even had a hand in production on the album that grabbed my number one spot, but we're not really talking about this latest leg in Peggy's career that kind of stemmed from him doing a couple beats on Danny's LP a few years back, you know what I'm saying. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on the album that introduced me to JPEG Mafia, 2018's Veteran. It's crazy to think that this album came out half a decade ago, because I remember hearing it for the first few times like it was yesterday. I should mention that the original album cover here isn't actually the album cover for the vinyl, but I decided to actually use this sleeve from the record instead of the album art it came with, as to avoid confusion in the thumbnail, considering the cover for the vinyl could easily be mistaken for Tyler the Creator's last full length, especially from afar. However, I should also say many people on my TikTok had said this cover was ripping Tyler off, but the vinyl release for Veteran came out before Call Me If You Get Lost was even being conceptualized. Just like the last LP I covered, JPEG Mafia's second studio album here has one of my favorite opening tracks of recent years. One thing that virtually all his projects have is a shared affinity for creative, out-of-the-box song titles, with a handful of my favorites being I Cannot Fucking Wait Till Morrissey Dies, Jesus Forgive Me I'm a Thought, Kingdom Hearts Key, Beta Male Strategies, Step Up Pig, Fentanyl Tester, Jack Harlow Combo Meal, and I Just Killed a Cop, Now I'm Horny. He smartly catches your eye with these memorable names, and then once you actually start listening, he seizes the opportunity to draw you in and keep you entertained the entire time. All of his projects accomplish this goal with various methods, but for me, Veteran is still my favorite album JPEG has released, probably at least partially due to nostalgic reasons. He's another guy whose growth has been super cool to see, because when I first started following him on Instagram, he probably had less than like 10,000 followers and hadn't really collaborated with any bigger names yet. To my knowledge, the first time he was introduced to the wider hip-hop audience, definitely the first time he was put on my radar, was when he did a feature on a Denzel Curry song alongside City Morgue Zillikami. But the first LP of his that really caught attention was Veteran, where it's hard to even describe how groundbreaking and fresh this thing felt when it first dropped. Not that it doesn't sound that way now, I mean it's hardly aged a day in the six or so years it's been out, in my mind, he's in the same forward-thinking movement that other experimental rap acts I love developed, many of which have collaborated with Peggy, like Run the Jewels, Clipping, Injury Reserve, and Brock Hampton. These and many more are MCs or producers that really shifted my view on how you could use elements of trendy hip-hop to your benefit by flipping ad-libs, producer tags, and auto-tune usage on its head. Many of the tropes that the mid-2010 SoundCloud scene was overflowing with, like the infamous Drapaholic mixtapes tag, and putting them in this new dark and trippy context. For me, Veteran is the epitome of an album that couldn't be created in the 90s, not just because of how futuristic and experimental his methods of production are, but due to how ingrained the dark web and internet culture is in his music. Prior to this, the only experience in hip-hop in a similar vein thematically and conceptually that I was aware of really was Death Grips with their No Love Deep Web LP, which I weirdly have this Mandela effect thing where I could have sworn it dropped the same year as the Money Store, but everywhere I look now it says it dropped in 2013 and this dropped in 2012, so. However, those guys don't exactly have much of an affinity for pop music, which really can't be said about Peggy, considering he's done covers of songs like Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen, and doesn't hesitate to pull from that side of the industry for samples either. Even though a lot of the times he'll just recreate them vocally himself as a means of not having to clear them. 
This knack for the occasional catchy hook or use of autotune gives an extra dimension to this noisy yet somewhat grim experience that's littered with references and sound bites that anyone who grew up in the 90s or 2000s would be familiar with. However, despite JPEG seemingly getting labeled as chronically online by certain ignorant listeners, he has a life rich with experiences, and that culminates into the title, which at first might seem metaphorical for someone who's been making music for a long time. But while I suppose that can technically also be applied, the real inspiration came from Peggy actually being a veteran himself. He's able to loop that military theme into the buggy, computerized feel very naturally by using modern references like Rainbow Six Siege to touch on these topics while not abandoning the original MO or vibe of the album. There are certain moments where he branches even further out into this alternative, almost avant-garde type of hip-hop that really draws a line in the sand almost immediately. A good example comes on the second track where Peggy uses this insane sample of ODB off his debut album. And I commend Peggy for putting something so forward-thinking and potentially divisive so early on the album. He pretty much tells the listener right there and then that you're either going to be on his page and sit back and enjoy the wild roller coaster of a ride, or you're going to be getting off before it even really gets started. It would be much less risky to just use accessible sounds to gain the interest of the audience, then put the more experimental stuff towards the back end, but if there's one word that isn't in JPEG Mafia's vocabulary, it's safe. The closest you'll get anywhere near it is when he taps into a more Lil Uzi Vert Migos-like flow pattern, but even then he never lands on any style long enough for it to get stale, and if anything those moments just add to this dystopian filter he's putting over popular 2010s hip-hop. His recent controversies with Kanye and Freddie Gibbs have been a bit disheartening, I don't really want to speculate, but at least with the Freddy situation, I personally get the impression JPEG was either drunk or generally just under the influence that day in the hotel. However, that might just be me trying to justify it, because that's probably the first time I've seen someone who I thought had such an intrinsic understanding of internet culture and kind of how trolls work, that it's hard to understand why he picked a battle that he really couldn't win. I think he's so used to being on the positive side of rap music coverage that he underestimated how good at trolling Freddie Gibbs is, and I think it's almost impossible to win any feud where you're threatening the other guy and he's just laughing it off. It's a bit counterintuitive to me for him to work with Kanye and swallow any of the criticisms he probably should have towards him, and instead go with someone for old news that nobody really cares about. But getting back to the album at hand, while every instrumental one here is handled by JPEG as anyone who keeps up with him would come to expect, he does actually throw a few guest appearances into the mix, including Bobby Rush, Freaky, and Young Midpack. For honorable mentions here, I think I'd go with Macaulay Culkin, Rock and Roll is Dead, DD Form 14, Germs, My Thoughts on Neogaf Dying, Libtard Anthem, Panic Emoji, DJ Snitch Bitch Interlude, Whole Foods, and Williamsburg. For my three favorite tracks overall on this thing, I'd have to go with 1539 North Calvert, Baby on Bleeding, and Thug Tears. Thank you for watching my 118th video. Next time, I'm going to discuss another groundbreaking act that I actually mentioned in this video. So look out for that one. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs off JPEG's Game Changer here are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? All right.